Well, the Winds of War was a big, you know, but at, at, at that, by that time, Reuben Cannon Associates was really, you know, it was, it was thriving, it was doing very well. Um, and the Winds of the War, which was at that was at that time, was going to be the biggest production in the history of television as a miniseries, the biggest miniseries ever. You know, it's going to take a year to film, and it was going to be was it twelve or eighteen hours? I don't know. It was, it was, it was going to be enormous, the highest budget, based on Herman Wilkes, Wilkes' very successful novel. So I'd read the book, and uh, Dan Curtis was the uh, writer director who was going to take on this, you know, massive project. It was for ABC. Uh, and I was one of several casting directors interviewed for the project and ultimately hired. And it was a, a big coup because it was, you know. And once again there, there was no format under the Screen Actors Guild for hiring actors for this span of time. Uh, a gentleman named, um, the head of, I think it was, no, it was Par Paramount was the studio behind that one. Paramount Studios was the studio behind the production of, of uh, Winds of War. And Hoyt Bowers, the head of casting, and I devised the, the uh, format for hiring actors for these long periods, sporadic periods of time within a year. Um, the casting, you know, was, was intense and was, uh, it took up, even my staff was doing all the other shows, but the Winds of War, I had an office at Paramount uh, with an enormous staff because the auditions, not just here, but around the world. And I had a, uh, my, my casting assistant, uh, partner uh, uh, was named Carol Dudley, and Carol was, spoke four languages: German, Italian, French, and so it was agreed that she would be the part of the advance team that would go to different parts of the world to interview with German actors and Italian actors in the various locations where the film took place. And um, so I took her domestic, and she took her all the foreign, which means she would go and videotape actors, send the tapes back to me. And I would spend long hours with Dan Curtis and his team and looking at actors, because I think the cast must have been 100 and some actors. It was enormous. Mm -hmm. um, Robert, you know, the actors being considered with Gregory Peck, I mean, Paul Newman. I mean, it was the, they wanted a major star to kick off, you know, to justify the, the expense. And ultimately came down to Robert Mitchum. And um, he wanted to do it. He agreed to do it. And, and and I negotiated his deal with um, with his agent. Uh, he was represented by an agent. I can't think. I want something tells me it was Mike Greenfield. I uh, represented him, and we made the deal. And the the casting of of the love interest was interesting because we looked at imagine how many actors actresses we looked at, and. There were several, and I'm trying to think at this time, with the, the, when I think of Wins I think of two factors. One is that uh, my first son was born, my oldest son was born, but I was doing, it was, he was born during a time when I was in the middle of negotiating for Ally McGraw. And I remember getting a call to Cedar Sinai from Ally McGraw's agent while my then wife was, uh, was in labor or something. Or, saying we must close this deal on Ally McGraw. That's all I can think of, and, and, and that, that somehow. And, and, but the process for Ally to get the role was really intense, really intense. How so? Um, that she, multiple meetings, several meetings, and, and it was a very challenging role. I mean, you know, she had never taken on a role of this depth. I mean, I think, you know, love story and even the getaway, but this was a different, this required a different level. And, and, um, there wasn't, I don't think there was, I can't remember if there was an audition or not, but, uh, she, but we hired her and I think it worked out fine. Yeah. But, and there was, uh, but, but what it was great for me is that it exposed me to actors around the world, many that we didn't hire. It was, so it, was, you know, it was somewhat rewarding and somewhat frustrating. The, and it just gave me, reminded me of just how vast the talent pool is of actors around the world, you know, and, and the different reasons why act, people pursue acting. Most of them weren't, you know, they weren't looking for careers in Hollywood. They just loved the craft, and it was so evident. I mean, so it was, uh, and my all what became uh, my assistant enjoyed the process. Carol Dudley, that when the, we finished the movie, she was asked if she could uh, open an office in London, and and call it Canon Dudley Casting, 
and CDC casting and exists to this day. Wow. Still there, so she's lived in, and we've worked together on projects where if, if I want to expand, when I was casting, whenever I wanted to expand my search outside the United States, I'd call Carol and say, who do you have there in London that could, you know, might be suitable for X? Um, Carmen Jogo, when I was casting the um, Sally Hemings story, her audition was done in London by Carol for me, and then ultimately she went from London right to the location uh, and starred in the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there have been several others as well. 